In this video we're going to talk about a really cool effect that we can do with post-processing and that's depth of field. If you're familiar with uh, cinematography or photography or film or anything like that, you've probably heard of depth of field. It's pretty much the process of having a camera focus in on a certain uh, item or object a certain distance away. And your eyes actually do this too in the real world. So we can imitate this using these depth of field parameters. So it's a little bit tricky to use, so I'm going to show you here how it works. I'm going to first select a method. I'm going to switch from the default, which is bulky, to Gaussian. And I'm going to show you first how Gaussian works, then we'll switch to the second method, which is uh, bulky. So you'll notice that immediately everything just gets out of focus and looks uh, a little bit out of whack. So what we need to do is we need to adjust some of our settings here. So I'm going to turn on the focal distance. I'm also going to need to adjust the focal region as well as the far border size. And there's a lot more settings, but we'll look at them um, and we'll adjust them as necessary. So I'm going to start off with these so that I don't overwhelm you. So the fast, the far blur side, I'm going to go ahead and, and lower that to zero just for now. I'll take the focal region here, and I need to increase this. By default, it's set to zero, so I'm going to set this to about 10. And the focal distance is kind of the big one here. It's set to 1,000 by default. And what that means is that things that are 1,000 unreal units away from our current camera viewpoint are going to be uh, in focus. So I'm going to lower that to about 10 and 20 and 50 and I'm going to start to work my way up. So basically um, what this is, is we're focusing on things right now 500 units away from the camera. If we set it to 20, that means we're focusing on things 20 units away from the camera, which is pretty close. I'm going to take that uh, far blur side and I'm going to start to tweak and adjust that. Um, I'll leave it at 1.0 for now. The focal region is another big setting you want to adjust. Basically, what you want to think of it is, first you want to decide on the distance, the focal distance that you want to focus on. So I want to focus on this coffee mug here and make everything that's really far away blur out, which could be pretty cool. So I know the coffee mug is pretty close to the camera. Now, I could go in one of the schematic viewports and kind of look and see how far away this mug is from the camera. But I'm kind of too lazy to do that, so I'm just going to go ahead and start playing with the numbers until it looks right. So about 10 units is pretty good. Now the focal region also works by units. Basically the way this works is think of it as first you set your focal distance. You need to make sure that you're, you have to decide on how far away you want to uh, focus on. Then the region is going to decide how big of an area you're going to focus on. So if it's really small and tight, you're going to focus on a very small area around that 10 units of focal distance. So I'm going to set that to about 10, which is not very large, but we can adjust that later if we want to. Then I adjust the uh, far blur size because that allows us to control the blurring of the stuff that's out of focus. So we're focusing on things that are about 10 units away from the camera right now. So by using the fast blur size, we can control how much blurring there is on things that are outside of that focal distance of 10 units. So using a small setting for the far blur side, blur size is um, advisable. That's what I kind of recommend. I'm going to take the focal region and increase that. And I'm going to take the focal distance. And if I set it to 100, you can see we're focusing on a couch. So I'm guessing the couch is about 100 units away from the camera right now. I'm going to take that focal region and increase it to 100. And now you see that some of the plants are in focus. So think of it almost like an invisible sphere right around the focal distance. The bigger it is, the more stuff is going to be in focus because that sphere or that region gets bigger and bigger. So it really depends on what kind of look you're going for. So this is kind of a cool look right here, kind of focusing on that stuff back there. Um, this is actually a lot of fun. You can end up spending a lot of time just tweaking this stuff and coming up with different looks and stuff like that, especially if you're into photography. You'll find this really, really interesting and fun to use. So I'm going to set the focal distance to about 5. I think 5 will work out pretty well. That mug looks like it's about 5 units away from our camera. So that's working out pretty well. We've got no real artifacts and stuff like that. If I come over here to this couch, you can see it looks pretty cool. So using a focal distance of 5 looks pretty neat. I'm using a focal region of 100, so we get a nice big area um, of focus around that focal distance of 5. And the fast blur uh, or the far blur size of 0.25 works pretty well because it's a nice soft blur. It's not too exaggerated. So let's switch over to the bokeh. 
depth of field, which is another method you can use. And by when you do that, you'll notice that there is no depth of field. It's all gone. There's no blurring. There's no depth of field. There's nothing. And that's because we have to use the scale setting. So it's set to zero by default, which essentially turns it off. I'm going to set that to two. And you notice that we have a lot of blurring. So this is a very exaggerated uh, depth of field right now. I'm going to set it to about 0.1. This is a pretty sensitive setting. It really depends on the environment you're working on. But in this environment, it's going to be pretty uh, sensitive. So I'll set it to 0.25, maybe 0.1. You have to use really small numbers because it's so sensitive. So I'll set it to like 0.15 or 0.1 and just kind of start looking at it and play with the, with the scale setting until I find something that, uh, that I'm comfortable with, that I, that I like or enjoy. So I think like a 0.2 or 0.15 seems to work out uh, pretty well for bokeh depth of field. Again, it's a lot of tweaking and playing around with the settings until you get the look that you're going after. If you're unfamiliar with these settings, it can be a little bit frustrating because if you don't know what setting does what, you're trying to get the depth of field to work and you can't, and it can be frustrating. So it's kind of the purpose of this video. I want to show you how you can really get kick started quickly and get a good depth of field effect and then after that you can go ahead and tweak it to your heart's content.